Believe it or not, Swift gives us a third way of unwrapping optionals and it's really useful. It's called the nil coalescing operator and it will unwrap the optional, but if it was empty, if it was nil, it'll provide a default value instead. Let's rewind a little bit. Here is a string string dictionaries. String for key, string for values. It's called captains and it maps starships to captains. If we read from there, the captain of Serenity, that's gonna read a non-existent key. With our Enterprise, Voyager, and Defiant, there's no Serenity in there, which means new will be set to an optional string with a value of nil. No such thing. With a nil coalescing operator, which is written as question mark, question mark, we can provide a default value for any optional, like this. Question mark, question mark, NA. And now that'll read the value from the captain's dictionary and attempt to unwrap it. If the optional had a value inside, had a, had a string inside, it'll be sent back and stored in new as a non-optional, as a real value. But if it's empty, if it's nil, it'll send back NA. This means no matter what the optional contains, a value or nil, the end result is that new will be a real string, not an optional one. That might be the string from the captain's dictionary. It might be NA. Either way, it will not be an optional string anymore. Now, hopefully I know what you're thinking. Can't we just specify a dictionary default when we read it? If you're thinking that, you are absolutely correct. We absolutely can do that. We could have said serenity default NA. And that produces exactly the same result, which might make it seem like the nil coalescing operator is a bit pointless. However, not only does nil coalescing work with dictionaries, but it works with any optionals. For example, the random element method on arrays returns one random item from the array, but it does so by returning an unoptional because you might be calling random element on empty array. And so we can use nil coalescing to provide a default. We could say, uh, let TV shows equals an array of Archer, Babylon 5, which I'm currently watching, and Ted Lasso. Then let favorite is TV shows dot random element. Optional string comes back, but we use nil coalescing, none. So it means you'll either get a random TV show or if the array were empty, you'll get back none. Or perhaps you've got a struct with an optional property inside and you want to provide a sensible default when it's missing. We could say, uh, struct book, let title string, let author optional string, and then let book equals a new book with title of Beowulf, author anonymous, we don't know, so nil, and let author equals book.author nil coalescing anonymous, print author, like that. Beautiful. It's even useful if you create an integer from a string because you might get back nil. You know, you, you, what happens is if you make this from a, an int from a string, you'll get back an optional integer because the conversion might have failed. You might have provided five as a string, but you more, might also have provided the string hello, which you can't be made to an integer. And so we can use nil coalescing to provide a sensible default. We could say let input equals an empty string not a real integer, let number equals an int of that input, nil coalescing zero, and then print number. And we'll get back zero. This is an invalid integer. So this thing will send back an optional integer with a value of nil, conversion failed, replace nil values with a zero. So as you can see, I hope the nil coalescing operator is useful any way you have an optional and you wanna use the value inside the optional or provide a default value if the value is missing.